Hey guys, welcome to Mangotology. My name is Stephen Mango and I'm an ex-Scientologist. And today we're here to talk about and update you guys about my friend Doug Kramer, who you guys know here on YouTube as Days But Not Confused, because he has been missing since Monday. Now, if you guys didn't see my video from 48 hours ago, it is now Saturday, so I filmed this video around Wednesday or so, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I filmed it Tuesday. I'm losing track of the days here, but the long and short of it in that video, I informed you guys that Doug was supposed to go live on his YouTube channel on Monday night at 7 p.m. I was originally told that it was supposed to be on Sunday, but then it was rescheduled for Monday, and then no one has heard from Doug ever since. Now, in his chat, because it was still open, because people were waiting for his video to go live and for him to pop up on the screen, when he never did, people took it upon themselves as viewers, not anyone who's known him in you know real life or actually is like a friend or anything of him. Just because after only a couple hours, like say five to ten hours, they were calling four LA hospitals, they were calling a psych ward, they checked arrest records, they called the LAPD, and they were talking about filing a missing persons report. Now that would have been premature anyways because they don't allow you to do that until it's like three days missing, I believe. Now you guys have to understand my perspective when all this sort of stuff was going on on Monday night to Tuesday. My video was filmed after 10 to 12 hours of Doug going missing. So you guys have to see it from my perspective. I'm over here watching people who might have never known Doug, might have never been in Scientology, not that it matters, but just people who are, yeah, you could be concerned. I was concerned, but you know, it was a dial down level of concern. It's kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm worried, but you know, Doug is a grown man that's like 50 years old. Of course, you know, sometimes people, they oversleep, they forget things, they go in their bed and they're like, oops, you know, I was watching Kardashians reruns. That would be more me, not Doug, but you know what I mean? Like watching Real Housewives and oops, I forgot I was supposed to go live. Maybe that's not in Doug's persona to be doing that. I don't know. I don't, you know, tune into every single video of every single friend of every YouTuber that I know. I'm sorry, I watch videos of theirs, but I don't tune in on like a daily basis because I'm more of a TikTok watcher more than anything. So I don't want people to take it the wrong way that I was not caring or was trying to divert some sort of efforts away. Like I didn't care because there's people like Lady Veritas and these like people who are like obsessed with SPTV that watch every single creator. Like three o'clock is Amy Scobie, four o'clock Mark Headley's going live. Live, then Mike Rinder at 5, then we're watching Aaron Smith 11 until 9 p.m. And it's like, they don't do anything else. They're always in everyone's comments and everything, which is fine, but it's like this obsessed, like they're cult groupies is what the word is that a lot of us critics use. They're cult groupies that like latch on because they see something in us or whatever. They don't know us in real life, but they like become obsessed with our world. They wear like their header photo on Twitter. Like they have like my face or like Diane e text. It's like, we're just people who left a cult, you guys. We're not celebrities. Maybe some of them who have hundreds of thousands of followers may feel that way or think that they're important. But again, it's just a creator on YouTube. So please just understand that from my perspective, even though, you know, I'm friendly with Doug, but I want to clear this up. I am not Doug's best friend. We have talked on the phone several times for several hours. We've texted, we've done live streams. We've talked about having him come to my house or me going to his house. That's the extent of it. I told you the last text before this was July 31st. We may have spoken on the phone since then. I have vague recollection probably around October that we've talked on the phone. But again, this is a casual friendship. So I don't want people to think that, you know, I am like his family member. Even if I love and care about the guy, he's not my best friend. And number one is Marisa. Number two is my friend Allie, who's a non-ex-scientologist. And the list goes on from there. So... Diane Etex is a different, you know, kettle of fish for me because she's somebody who's my actual, like, best friend in real life. So <clears throat> that's what kind of covers my behavior about those videos. Again, I wouldn't want the police called on me and having them knock on my front door and having the psych ward check to see if I'm arrested. I would not want those rescue efforts after 10 or 12 hours. As a grown man, he very well could be doing any number of things, reconnecting with his family. We do not know. So sometimes there's a reason for silence that we have to respect. Now the internet has now made this my, and this is where the issue's kind of going at. This is my channel, you guys, number one. I'm gonna talk about myself because this is my journey and recovery as 
because people don't know because I haven't been on YouTube in a while. Maybe you're a new watcher. This is my video diary of my journey in and out of Scientology and my dealings in the ex-Scientology community. So I'm going to relate personal tidbits, stories, whatever, because I'm not a reporter. I don't know what I'm doing here half the time. I'm just doing my best to talk about my experiences and kind of relate stories. So if you don't like that, there's tons of ex-Scientologists on YouTube now, whether I agree with their viewpoints or not, it doesn't matter. If there's somebody else that you guys find more linear and not as neurodivergent as I am, then very well go watch those people. But I think my longtime viewers who I love and adore for the last 10 plus years know and follow me for my heart and the emotional gut-wrenching feelings I had leaving Scientology. You could watch all my back catalog, the newbies who are watching these videos to see like the mental trauma if you guys are interested in the psychological damage of Scientology. My channel is for that. Of course I'm worried and panicked about Doug, but now there's people on the internet which I'm trying to get that have been gaslighting me for days and being like, oh, like, you know, Steve Mango's a troll and, you know, this is Lady Veritas and some of those other people in the live chat who were like instigating those efforts, but Anyways, there's people, you know, calling me a troll, like gaslighting me, like what kind of friend are you and you're a bad friend. If I was, you know, um, his friend and I was in your position, I would have already knocked on his door. So like, why haven't you done that yet? And like, you don't really care about Doug or you would have already done something. Just like all the psychological, I don't even know everything off the top of my head, but for days and days and days and days, and I'm getting texts, someone sent me his address and this isn't any shade to that person, but they sent me his address with no apartment number. So I'm um, being like, knock on his door have you knocked on his door yet so I again when I'm like laying in bed like I had my therapy yesterday I'm laying in bed with tumors all intercostal in my chest so every time I breathe if I breathe too much I turn my chest the wrong way the pain fires off right so I'm disabled and I'm in a very like painful health crisis I would say and I'm not in a position to drive all around Los Angeles hoping that the address on white pages or something is this address and you guys have to realize too in LA in a big city you don't know your neighbors. These neighbors here, I've probably been neighbors with them for 10 years. I don't know their name. I've never shook their hand. I know nothing about them. And I know they live there because I've seen a moving truck drive by the other day and they were packing things in. So maybe I've seen, you know, boxes, but I've never seen the people that live there. Now also, let me show you guys something. This is not a green screen for the troll who said that this was a green screen I filmed on. So this is not a green screen. I could go outside. You guys know that. I filmed my first two and a half hour video out there. I'm trying to get my camera to focus. Um, I filmed my first video out there for the people who think that I'm filming on a green screen. Doesn't make a difference. You don't know your next door neighbor in LA a lot of the time. So if I show up to an apartment complex or like a multifamily home type of situation, I saw a gate. So again, I don't have a coat. I'm not gonna hop over a huge gate in a physical condition that I'm in. I'm not gonna hop on a huge gate. And then even if I did and somebody held a gate open for me, I'm gonna knock on apartment one of 26. Hi, have you seen this man? He's my friend and he's missing. No, Steve, I was, I get, like every time I get a text, I'm like, oh, is it Doug? You know what I mean? No, it's not. I get like so like anxious. Knock on apartment one. No, we don't know Doug. Apartment number two, we don't know who he is. And I'm just supposed to like guess. So say I do that because everyone's made it my responsibility because I've talked about it as somebody who's a friend, a friendly acquaintance of mine. So say I do that and say I, they say he's apartment number six. I knock on apartment six, I'm banging on the door. Doug, 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 right? He doesn't answer. So maybe he's at work. Maybe he went on a little mini trip to Vegas because Vegas is a three and a half hour drive. He went to Palm Springs. I don't know what he does with his time on the weekends. I'm just making something up. Say he went to Vegas and I'm knocking, I'm knocking, I'm knocking. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna think one of three things. One, I'm gonna think he had a medical or health emergency, he knocked his head or something like that happened. Number two, I'm gonna think maybe he overdosed, even though he's not a drug user, maybe he overdosed on something. Number three, you know, I call the cops and think, oh my God, maybe he's in there, something happened, whatever it's gonna panic every single person more. And then what? I'm gonna tell the LAPD, and what are they gonna do? They're gonna knock on his door, he doesn't answer, then they're gonna say, oh, maybe there's a health thing. We have to knock down the door or something. I don't know what they do in these welfare checks to the point if I'm saying, for example, if I called and I said, we need a welfare check, and I called the corrupt LAPD, which is in bed with Scientology, and I call them and I say, go knock on Doug's door, what are they gonna do if I'm like, hey, people really need to get to this man? and they knock down his door or something. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't know what happens. I've never had this situation occur, but so many people now have made it because I live in Los Angeles, as many other critics do. You guys watch, I wouldn't say majority, but 
a lot live in Southern California. There's a bunch. So why is this now only Steve Mango's responsibility when I'm dealing with so much on my own? So I was talking to my therapist, Cassie, about this. And Cassie and I, um, she helped me when I was leaving Scientology. I like lost touch with her for like so many years. She moved to San Francisco, but she was like an intern or something at this like LGBT like youth type of therapy that did therapy for people up to like age 22. I was leaving Scientology at like 21, 22 years old. So it was like, oh, perfect. So she kind of helped me with coming out of the closet and when I was like meeting Jeff and like all this sort of stuff. So it was nice. But then I reconnected with her like three months ago. Like I want to go to therapy again. So I see her like two to three times a week. It's like $150 a session, like literally out of pocket. So it's like literally so much money to do therapy with her, but like I really connect with her. And I was telling her about the situation for like the first like 10, 15 minutes of my therapy. And she's like, you know what, Steve, this is like not your own personal burden and your own responsibility. You have to like have boundaries with people on the internet too, who are trying to like drag you into everything. Like people should call for a welfare check. But like, this isn't like your like, you know, <laughs> burden, your backpack, whatever. Like you're like taking all this on because it's like literally affecting me to be, you know, worried about my friend. So I agree with her in the sense I told her about the LAPD's like connections and stuff and she understands, but you know, she's like, well, a lot of people are watching these videos I'm sure that you're making. So, you know, I'm sure other people are also chipping into, <laughs> you know, maybe reach out to him or kind of see what's going on, which I don't know, you guys, like I said, it's a tricky situation. I'm willing to like knock on his door if I had the right address and the right apartment number. But again, like what if he's at work? What if he's doing something? I don't know if that's going to give us any answers or closures to what's like happening here. I don't know what to do. That's why I'm on camera and I'm brainstorming with you guys. What do you think of this case? It's been five days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So it's about five days later and still no word. Now, I don't know if I said this already, but I had a mutual friend call him. His phone rang, 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 and went to voicemail. So it doesn't look like it's shut off, but I don't know how that type of thing normally happens. Like, would it just go straight to voicemail? I don't know. My open message to Doug, if you're watching this and for some reason you're going through something or there's some personal reason why you're not like letting people know any update or whatever, I just want to let you know I've already texted you, Doug. And if your phone's not on, you didn't see it, again, that's private. But again, if you need anything, if you need a place to stay, if you need someone just to talk to privately, I'm not going to air it on YouTube. It's just if there's something that is going on, like, oh my God, like, and I don't even want to speculate because I don't know what it is. I don't have a bus pass to go to work and then I can't make money and then my internet gets shut off. Okay, I'll buy you the bus pass and I'll buy you the Wi-Fi for a month, you know, to get caught up, whatever. You guys know I have a good heart. I do that for people that I love and I care about just in any respect. So I won six figures in the casino since June. I have spare cash for that type of thing. So literally, Doug, just let us know that you're at least at live. Even if you don't need anything, that you're alive, you're okay, and you could take all the time you need. Look at me. I took two years off of YouTube or one year, however long, and I get it. I wouldn't want to search and rescue just because I didn't come on YouTube for a couple months for people to wonder. People re were relating this to the situation with Amy Scobie and Apostate Alex. I guess they were supposed to go live together and then Alex like overslept. I never watched his videos. I know nothing about him, so I hope I'm not. This is just what I'm told. He overslept and then Amy Scobie contacted like the police in like the UK and were like, hey, he didn't come to a live stream. But I guess Alex thought it was funny or was like, ha ha ha, like, oh, I overslept. Oh, thank you so much for caring about me, Amy Scobie. Again, I don't know if that's accurate, but that's what I was told. That he was like happy that she like did a welfare check on him because they didn't go live and she had to go like live alone or something. Some of these SPTV people are so crazy. The long time like critics, like the, the Mike Rinders and you know, those type of people have been crazy. And Again, I've told you guys for 10 years, like when they discon Mike Rinder disconnected from me, like so many of these people that are these critics, like these Mark Headley, who's a hot-headed, crazy person who like literally like chewed me out via email before. There's so many of them that I'm like, wow. But if I say something, then I'm Osa, which not everyone is Osa. I'm gay Steve Mango. They're not gonna welcome me in as an Osa member. You know what I mean? I'm in my own world. I'm going to college, trying to become an aesthetic nurse. I'm not Osa, you know what I mean? Like, I'm clearly speaking out about Scientology and I have for a decade, you know what I mean? I was there on set with Louis Thoreau and Marty Rathbun when he was flipping back. Like, I have been in like Scientology critic history with different things that have happened. So, 
I don't want people to make it seem like, oh, Steve Mango's nobody. Like, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I made videos on YouTube, me, Tori Chrisman, Mark Bunker, like the, like the literal, like, three OGs. So people who don't, like, respect that when it was more dangerous, when people were getting more, like, tailed by OSA and things happening, before Leah Remini, before a lot of people came out, there was people like us risking everything just to inform you guys what was going on. Again, I'm more direct now than I was many years ago because I've just had enough of the torment from the ex-Scientology community, not the watchers, I'm talking about the critics now. We're a little bit segueing, and then I'll close it out with my final words about Doug and stuff like that. But again, this is my channel, my journal of a sort, and I want to share my opinion because I don't know if I'm going to be able to make a video because I'm getting surgery, cosmetic, in three weeks. And I don't know how I'm going to feel to want to make videos for another month or something or two months or some whatever. So I'm just letting you guys know that the ex Scientology community has rung me through. You know, the critics, other people. I've had no voice, no platform. I've been silenced. I talked about my literal, again, sorry that I'm in this video, I'm talking about this again, but when I was literally abused by Karen about to end my life and was literally gonna jump off the balcony at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas, like literally on my way, like driving on the Las Vegas Strip there, you know, and I'm um, getting messages from Karen and have spoken to her. And what did she do? Nothing. She said, don't tell your husband. I won't tell anyone. Don't call. Like, I'm like, I don't know, like, if I just need to be, like, you know, getting, you know, help or, like, if I have to go to the hospital type of thing or what. And it was like, no, because they're going to drug you and then you're ineligible for auditing. And, like, I could take you in session. I've handled so many cases. And this is, like, as an independent, like, ex-Scientologist because people leave in stages. Not everyone leaves Scientology and then it's like, it's the most evil thing. Sometimes people like are like, oh, maybe there is some good. Maybe I do like auditing. Like there's sometimes it's like gray area that people swim in before they're like a full blown, like it's a scam. Not everyone mentally disconnects that fast. So when I was in literal torment, like about to like end my life, you know, Karen was like, hey, pay me more money for more auditing. There was so much more of the narcissistic abuse that has happened with her. I have all the screenshots. I have hours of videos go on my channel. It's like a four to five part video, like four and a half hours of content to take you all inside the ex-Scientology, independent Scientology community, I should say, for the independence and how they treated me too. Like somebody like a Karen saying, L. Ron Hubbard and Scientology is a scam. And then on the same token, taking me into session, knowing that she's saying auditing doesn't work, but is willing to take $7,500 from me. So my point about this, about the critic community, is that when I spoke up about this, they're platforming Karen. You've never seen Steve Mango on any live stream because they don't like me because I'm critics attacking critics and Steve Mango is like more unhinged. He may say something that is just me speaking the truth. You know what I mean? Like, that's why you haven't seen me on, like, anything or contributing because people didn't get a good impression of me doing that. And I was silenced. They literally, like, dozens of these critics, all the ones that you could think about, unfriended me. Hmm. I'm trying to help other people from not being, like, taken in. If they leave Scientology and they get in the hands of someone like Karen, that is not a good thing. But I cannot even begin to tell you guys the amount of drama that's happening right now in the ex-Scientology community. I cannot even begin to tell you. But I'm just saying, when I heard some sort of things, I was just like, oh my god. Like, things that have not, you know, come out and stuff like that. But I'm like, right now, the ex-Scientology community feels like it's in shambles in a lot of different ways. And people are starting to see the Scientology cult-like dynamics outside of that. So now, I ask you guys, do you blame me? when I'm working two to three times a week with Cassie on video therapy and I'm going to college, should I, when people say, well, why isn't Steve Mango popping on camera? Now that you guys have seen it, that I've tried to tell you for 10 years, I'm talking to, like, to the naysayers, for 10 years I've tried to tell you guys about how toxic and abusive and things this community gets to be. And then people, you know, being like, Steve Mango, come back, come back, come back. And I'm like, literally, like, I'm trying to go to college and learn pharmacology so I can be a nurse or something, or I'm like, over here, like, doing video therapy. Should I put myself in the mix of all this, like, it feels like my baggage of the past. It feels like my baggage of 10 plus years ago that is like, all of a sudden, I'm like, these names and people are starting to swim around again. And I'm like, I'm trying to move on from all of this, you guys, to the best of my ability. I want to make videos. I love you guys. But 
there's a part of me, it's like, I can't talk about it too much or I'm gonna get like stressed out. So that was the little detour in the video. Of course, if I have an update about Doug too, I'm gonna keep you guys posted. I'll let you guys know in a pinned comment if I hear anything or if I don't make the video, like I said, for a few weeks, if I'm going through something or I don't wanna film, then I'll try to keep you guys updated in the comments of this video. I won't forget to do that. So please let me know your comments and your ideas and suggestions of what to do in the situation with Doug too. I'm all ears if anyone has suggestions on what we should do. Again, it's not, my sole responsibility to find or save Doug or do anything. I love and care about the guy. I'm saying that with love that I'm trying to take care of my own self and my own health and things that I'm going through on a physical basis that I'm going to do my best, you guys. But again, it's a lot for someone like me to feel stress and triggered because if you know anything about chronic contractible pain, it flares up the pain even more. It like, jupe, and it turns up the volume and I cannot be in the hospital over this from my own physical sense. So I'm just letting you guys know. If someone else wants to carry the torch, let me know and I'll like put rescue efforts to you guys. I love you all and I'll keep you guys posted if I have any update and I hope you guys have a great weekend. See you guys.